If you want your audio file to sound like this, and definitely not like this, then you need to stick around because in this video, I'll show you how to one, better your dialogue audio with audio effects, and two, cut, loop, and mix your music with your dialogue audio so your video comes alive. But before I do that, please press that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss anything. Right, let's begin with that good stuff. Before we start, let's add an audio file into the timeline. Then go to the window menu and select Audio Track Mixer. Then click on this tiny arrow and get ready to add some audio plugins. The first plugin I use is the multiband compressor. See, this is to raise or lower the level and exact frequencies to make the audio punch through. Just a word of warning, when you open this plugin, the preset is already fired up. So that's the reason why it's so loud and kind of sounds distorted, but we'll fix that. Most compressors consist of five controls. And once you understand these, compressing becomes a lot clearer. See, I won't be explaining these here, but may do in a future video. Anyway, in the multiband compressor, I use the broadcast preset and tweak it until it sounds and looks about right. First, I lower this the limiter threshold to avoid the over compressed sound. See, I'm never really shouting in videos, so my voice is unlikely to clip. The job of a limiter is just that, to limit the level of a signal so it doesn't clip or distort the audio. I also uncheck the brick wall limiter for that same reason. I then increase the threshold on my low frequency range to make my voice sound warm and fuller. And that's pretty much all I do to compress vocals. So now let's hear the audio before and after the multiband compressor. So this is before. Add compression based on where you are and what overall sound you're trying to achieve. And this is after. Add compression based on where you are and what overall sound you're trying to achieve. It probably sounds like that nothing really happened with that effect. But for me, compression is about making the average level more consistent. So nothing really sticks out. Before we continue, Let's lower the level of the audio channel because everything looks and sounds a bit too loud. Okay, let's continue. The second plugin I use in the chain is an equalizer, specifically the parametric equalizer. See, this is to enhance or improve the sound of the frequencies I just compressed with the multiband compressor. Again, I use a preset for this effect. In particular, the vocal enhancer preset. Presets are good because they highlight the areas to work on so you just go in and add slight tweaks. See, I'm recording in a fairly reflective room, so not the ideal scenario in EQing, but let's see what happens. So I start with a high pass filter and use a steep slope to cut all low end frequencies below 100 Hz. They may interfere with the low bass frequencies in your music file when mixing later, so it's best to get rid of them now. I then go to the high shelf, change the slope, and scrape through the frequency until it sounds right to me. This helps the vocal sound slightly less muddy. You can hear this as I scrape through the frequencies. If you want to make your voice warm and fuller sounding, you need to boost between 100 and 300 Hertz, depending on how warm you want it. I compressed this low frequency range using the multiband compressor earlier, so now I'll continue to boost this area. The range for my voice is roughly around 180 Hertz, with a 3 dB boost and a 1 Q factor or bandwidth setting. So I'll boost in this range slightly so you can hear it. By the way, these frequency ranges will be different for males and females. To make your voice sound clearer, I boost the frequencies between 3000 and 4000 Hz. These are the high human speech ranges. As you can hear, it makes the audio cut through slightly more. Again, these frequency ranges will be different for males and females. Females will be more towards the 4000 Hz. Let's hear the audio before and after the compressor and equalizer were added. Just a quick tip, to open and view two plugins at the same time, click on the targeted icon. Right, let's hear them. So this is before. Equalizing or EQing is all about listening to boost or cut. And this is after. 
equalizing or EQing is all about listening to boost or cut. This is really all I do when I compress and EQ my vocals. They are really subtle changes, but still adds warmth, clarity, punch, and all that goodness. Let's clean this dialog file further by adding in the third plugin. The final thing I do is to get rid of the noise in the file. I use Voice Denoise by Isotope and have been for years. I find Adobe's Adaptive Noise Reduction plugin, whew, that was hard. Yeah, that plugin filters the audio a little too much for my liking. I also find that it takes a little too long for the effect to latch on to the audio to begin noise reduction. It's a good effect, but Adobe still needs to work on it a little more, I feel. Anyway, let's use Isotope's voice denoise. Double click on the plugin to open it, and the plugin will do the rest when it's set to adaptive mode. You might need to adjust the threshold and reduction levels a little to fine tune the sound. Let's listen to it before and after the denoise. This is the audio before the effect was applied. I've opened the window so you can hear the noise around me. And this is the audio after. I've opened the window so you can hear the noise around me. Lowering the noise in an audio file is something that I do in every project, unless it's needed to help the story or message in the video, like being in a call center environment or if you're filming an event such as a wedding. So I use the voice denoise effect when the ambient or surrounding noise is not that important. Mixing and enhancing a music audio file is fairly straightforward. As the audio has already been mixed by a sound engineer, most of the work has been done for us. The only things I do are one, cut the audio and loop the audio, two, EQ it slightly so it works with my dialogue audio file, and three, add a side chaining or auto duck effect so my dialogue audio file always punches over the music file. So let's start with cutting that audio file. Before I forget and completely deafen you guys, let me lower the level of the music. Right, we're good. I first listen to the music file and add markers on sections that will make good loops. As you can see, I've marked and labeled the loop start and end points. Any variation in that loop, such as a new instrument being added just so the overall sound isn't too monotonous and the end section of that music file. Let's stop this for a second and explain how to cut and make a good loop. First, find the downbeat in the music, which is usually the first beat in a bar. So if I go to the loop start marker I added, that peak represents a downbeat. It's the first beat. If I jump to the loop end point marker, you'll see another peak. And this is where to cut for it to loop when it's copied and pasted or whatever. In short, find the first downbeat and the last downbeat in the loop you want to make and cut that section out. I'll then cut the other sections at their marker points as the downbeats for these were already set by me. I give each section a color so it's easy for me to find them when I'm creating this trimmed down or trimmed up music file. Now I'll move these sections down the timeline to make space for the loop I cut. It's a good time to hear if the loop actually sounds good and basically works. So I'll copy the loop, paste it straight after and play it. That sounds good to me, so I'll copy and paste some more in. The other sections can now be moved in place and checked too. This is how I trim a music file and get it ready for my dialog audio. The length of the music file will change depending on how long the dialog is. Once I'm happy with the overall structure and sound, I add some gentle EQing. Let's first lower the music volume again to hear the dialog better. The second thing I do after trimming the music is equalize it. And I do this whilst the dialog is playing to see and hear if any frequencies clash. Then I'll add a parametric equalizer on the music channel. I'll double click to open this and the EQ on the dialog audio channel to see them together. I'm listening out for any clashing frequencies in the music file and cutting those. I might do a gentle cut on some of the low frequencies so the file doesn't sound too bass heavy. This changes on every project. I don't EQ much or add effects to the music file. 
Let's now move to the final step in mixing your music. And this one is exciting. Premiere Pro hasn't currently got this feature as an effect, so yeah, it's exciting. This is the last effect in my audio chain and is a really common effect used when mixing a dialogue file with another sound such as music. It's known as side chaining or ducking. So when a dialogue is playing, the music will be quieter and the final audio will not sound like a big mess. Anyway, a company called Beat Rig has a plugin called Sidekick Extended 6 that does ducking quite well. And all the information can be found in the video description below. To use this effect, first add the plugins on both the dialogue and music channel strips. Then, on the dialogue plugin, select Send on 1, which basically means this is the main audio file I want to send to get ducked. On the music plugin, select Receive on 1, meaning this channel will receive the audio from channel 1. If I play the voice and music files together, you can hear the effect, but it's way too strong. This is because the ducking is fully cranked up. So let's decrease that by adjusting this duck outer ring until the dialogue and music sound right, meaning you hear the music louder in the sections where the voice and dialogue is not playing, like this. Adjusting the recovering will affect how fast or how slow the music will return to its full strength again. These are the settings I've used in this plugin for this specific project, but it will be different for everyone. Side chaining or ducking is such a good effect and it saves so much time. Instead of manually going in and adding in keyframes, removing keyframes just to lower or increase the volume. So there you have it. The audio track mixer in Premiere Pro I feel is the best way to process your audio. You just need to spend time and tinker with it. So spend time and tinker with it. As usual, if you like the stuff that you saw and heard, give the video a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again soon.